Yeah. This is the Relevant Podcast. It's Friday. March 11th, 2022, and it's The Relevant Podcast here in Orlando. I'm your host, Cameron Strang, and joining me from Loverland, Virginia, it's Jesse Carey. Hello, hello. From Austin, Texas. No, she's in Denver today. Author, speaker, podcaster, Jamie Ivey. Hey, guys. And from Nashville, Tennessee, the family is back together. I feel like we've been like rotating for a a little while. Y'all have been busy. Everybody's here. Uh, From Nashville, artist, producer, mogul, Derek Miner. What up, though? (laughs) It is nice being back with you guys. It's Friday. It's the first day of my birthday weekend. So I'm just just like on Tuesday. Happy birthday weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Cameron, your nose is a little red, buddy. Have you been on the sauce, the milkshakes this morning? It's red? (laughs) For real? <laughs> Playing with you, bro. Oh, I was like, wait, what? Oh, oh. I was like, maybe this is it. I didn't know. No, no, no sauce. <laughs> no, that's for that's for the uh, after party after the recording. Uh, no. Oh, man. I don't I just see big bottles of Jack Daniels behind you for some reason. I don't know. That is, that is, that's a Tennessee drink. That is not my drink of choice. That is, yeah, uh, that is, yeah for sure. <laughs> We have a great show in store for you. Coming up later, we have director Sean Levy. He has a, I mean, he's a famous director, but he has a new film out today called The Adam Project, starring Ryan Reynolds and a lot of other people. Kind of cool that he's on the show today. So he's coming up later. Don't miss that. Also, um, it's spring break, you know, for a lot of people. Today starts spring break. uh, And, you know, there's road trips happening right now. You probably load up this podcast for your road trip. And so at the end of the show, we're going to play a little road trip game with the cast it's not really like would you rather but i'm gonna bust out the table topics questions i got some questions for the staff so or for the cast so stay tuned for that you don't want to miss it so cameron we're recording this before your birthday weekend a little that is true. peek behind the, the the curtain here that is true. and i will be flying down uh we're gonna go to some games i'm very excited right. to come down and and and, and hang and, and and celebrate the birthday Tyler weekend be here. we got some Tyler's gonna be there. it's gonna be a good time yep. the only reason the only thing I'm nervous about coming down is I will be flying to Central Florida at the same time of spring break. Oh, and yeah. I haven't do done it. a lot of traveling during the pandemic. I, you know, not out of any opposition. I just didn't really travel very much. Right. And I feel like I have picked possibly the worst, the worst weekend to get back into the travel game because it is spring is spring break is coming too, And so I feel like I'm going to be on a plane with nothing but, you know, people heading down to spring break in Florida. Those are not the type of people who I think are taking the the necessary precautions here at the tail end of the (laughs) pandemic. I feel like the next variant, the next variant, I hope not. And I'm not speaking it into existence if that's what you believe. But what I'm saying is, if I were a betting man, I would bet that the next variant will emerge on a plane heading down to to any part of Florida for spring break. Just because I feel like the people that are flying down right now to just rage for a few weeks in the Florida sun are not taking a lot of health precautions here. Do you remember last last week the shots from Miami of like, you know, like everything was shut down (laughs) and then like the spring break pictures from Miami. All right, let me set your mind at ease, Jesse. There, There are five Floridas, but three main Floridas. Okay. Yeah. So you've got your South Florida, Florida, and you've got your Central Florida, and you've got your North Florida. If you were flying into either North or South Florida, I would agree with your concerns. Because yeah. you're if you're flying into Panama City or Destin, you're you're gonna be on a plane. You're probably on a Spirit Airlines plane, first of all. And <laughs> it's it's Lord of the Flies. Hey, it's gonna be Lord of the Flies. Before you get off the plane. Yeah. Well, let, yeah. I, you're gonna I'm have frankly, a lot of stuff, not just frankly, COVID, you know. Frankly, I'm surprised there haven't been more pandemics that have started from people from on, uh, just on random Spirit Airline flights in and out of Florida. Like yeah. I'm surprised the C D C doesn't have like lab chemists in coats yeah. like just scraping the back of those <laughs> tray tables, you know, like, like loading up dishes. petri dishes, yeah. Yeah. and they're like, "We've got variants here of viruses yeah. I've never seen before." Right? Somehow, an amalgamation of grease, 
of 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 pretzel crumbs of what appears to <laughs> they be don't have pretzels on above. spirit. That's like nine dollars. They don't what, have pretzels. What, what, uh, what appears to be smuggled on there you go. Uh, tequila <laughs> as well as uh, sunscreen and sweat have all merged to create yes. a new super virus yeah. that could that could wipe out humanity. That's Panama City. That's the North Florida. South Florida, same thing. Y'all remember the pandemic pictures? Crazy South Beach partying, all that. Central Florida, dude. You're going to be on a plane with a bunch of families whose kids are families. on spring break, and they're just they're just going to stay at the resorts. They're trying to hit up theme is parks. That, they're trying to have better? a good time. You're, it's going to be better? annoying because the kids are going to be hyper and loud and stuff, but you're not going to catch diseases the way you would flying to North or South Florida. <laughs> whoa, just whoa, whoa. I got, I, got, I got two kids. <laughs> They yeah, carry diseases. That's true. More than anybody. <laughs> Not that kind. Not that hey, kind. No, I'm saying I call, yeah. I, I'm telling you, like we you're just gonna have a runny nose. Yeah, you're gonna have our a runny nose. Was never sick. sick until we sent our kids to school. That's true. We, yeah, as that's soon as true. we sent our kids to school. All of us, we got everything. Yeah. I, don't need, I, I got stuff. I don't even know what it is. Not an STD, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but I feel she like, just said it. That's, that's a, it. That's she just great, said it. A, it's a but great I'll say point. This, the, the people who emerge, <laughs> like the the people who emerge from the next pandemic, will yeah. be you know basically flight attendants from Spirit Airlines because they've experienced <laughs> they, their immune system has yeah. already been intaking all these strange viruses and building natural immunities. Yeah. They're our only hope, really. And and, you know, but I appreciate Spirit Airlines <laughs> I mean, game. Think about it. Like, we honor the frontline workers because of the risks they put themselves into. The nurses, the doctors, yeah, the, right. you know, the, the people helping people who need the help most. We need to be honoring the Spirit Airlines flight attendants because they have put themselves in harm's way for years with diseases, abuse. I mean, I'm just saying we need to honor We need to have nights at NBA games and honor the frontline workers of the Spirit Airlines flight crew. So. You know, they, they when you apply for a job at Spirit Airlines, first they, they are like, all right, you know, we want to make sure you're up to date on FAA re- regulations. Two, do you know how to fight or break up a fight? Because that's a big part of it. that's a big part of this job. It's a huge, huge part of this job is is fighting. And also that's why Spirit Airlines, you're right, Cameron, they don't give out pretzels. They actually require you to get you have to feed the flight attendants. You gotta bring food for the flight attendants, part of the deal now. It's uh, but either way, I I'm not flying Spirit, uh, thankfully, but I will be on an airplane with uh, you know some some people ready to rage down in Florida. So Dude, we'll see. We'll see. Der- what Derek's happens. coming down in two weeks, and like yesterday, we were literally talking about like specifically trying to find a flight that gets him in at the right time for you know what we're gonna do. And it, everything was like a little too early or a little too late. And then I looked. I was helping search too, and I looked, and I was like, Hey, uh, I know what you're going to say, but there is a Spirit Airlines flight that have, that lands at the exact time and it's only $45. And he goes, oh, heck no. And so I was like, all right. <laughs> no, I didn't say heck. <laughs> I didn't mean, say heck. I just censored it for <laughs> Thank you for censoring it. That is a trap. Listen, yeah. that... Listen, How's a flight hey, look, with look, the gas prices hey. right now? How is any flight forty five dollars? First of all, you know, I mean, like because it might not. You're get pushing there. half yeah. that flight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're not I'm totally topping confident. off the tank. They're just going to put it about half full and hope for the best. So I'm pretty confident there's drug trafficking happening on the forty five dollars flight. <laughs> oh, just gonna leave it at that. They trafficking some drugs for How sure. Is that you can I can do the math and they're actually losing money on this ticket. If why why is this happening right I'm, now? I'm trying to tell you, so you got other revenue streams. <laughs> Pablo Escobar is somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a Pablo Escobar situation happening. The new one is out. He's doing something. To, uh, I'm El Chapo. El Chapo cousin is on spirit right now with a oh, whole man. yeah, <laughs> and it's in his carry on. Side note, I'm just gonna say, yeah. side note, guys, there was a story in Nashville. This is this is crazy, but there was a story in Nashville. This lady that had went to L.A. and she came back with two carry ons full of weed to sell in Nashville. So wow, drug trafficking happens. Yeah, my my uh my sister's my sister's a flight attendant. She tells me all these stories and this lady literally got busted cuz you know you can have 50 pounds or more or 50 <laughs> pounds or less in your in your in your bag. She's she like packed her carry-on full of bricks of marijuana. What? So what is she it, it happens. How did she yeah, think look, that it was, was so loud. Through. She's dry she she yeah. gets to Nashville but it was so loud. Her backpacks were were screaming, and and uh, yeah. So just That's don't do it. 
This ain't worth it. Doesn't worth seem it. like she she thought out that plan very well. But you know, and uh, she doesn't look like the type of the typical drug dealer. She looked like a, a L.A. model. I was like, oh okay, struggling out there in L.A. Gas <laughs> price is seven dollars and sixty cent per gallon. So yeah, you do what you got to do. That's crazy. This makes me like watching all this news. I'm very grateful that I a few years ago invested in, in an electric car because I'm not. A, I haven't been to a gas station in years. So. Yeah, I'm about man. to start just biking everywhere. I'm just going to be a bike guy from here yeah. on. You know, just everywhere just you go, you're going to be a little sweaty. Change of clothes. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> a little sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. It's got its downsides, but, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. We'll move the show along. Stay tuned. Up next, Emily joins us from Paris for the last time. She's, this is our last week in Paris uh, for uh, Relevant Buzz. Stay tuned. You even still when you sleep in the bed in the house where we live, and I'm far away. I am with you even still. People say I'm going too far. You're listening to Chick 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 and Maria Uzor song is storm around the world well today's show is brought to you by he gets us uh, a national campaign influencing millions to think differently about jesus through broadcast ads social media videos and digital marketing the he gets us campaign is connecting with people in the middle of their daily routines more importantly it's introducing those who are skeptical about faith to the radical love of jesus by intentionally focusing on how relatable his experiences were Within a couple of months, they've had over 31 million views on YouTube, not to mention Facebook, Instagram, and broadcast networks while focusing on just 10 test markets. They're having a huge rollout uh, during March Madness starting this weekend. You're going to see that he gets us commercials or videos everywhere. And if people see them and maybe bring them up to you uh, and head your way asking for answers, be ready by visiting hegetsuspartners.com. That's hegetsuspartners.com. There's a bunch of great resources. All the videos are there. You can check out uh, the team behind, the story behind them. Uh, a lot of info. Go check it out. He gets us. You're going to be hearing a lot from them this year. It's really great stuff. Okay, it's time for... Relevant Buzz. Please welcome to the show Emily in Paris, who's reporting live from an Airbnb 10 minutes from the airport. Because she's going to be leaving there in two days and she's very sad. Hi, Emily. Hi, guys. I really think you love bringing it up because you're just like waiting for me to cry about it. And it's coming. I'm jealous. But... You've been in Paris for a month. <laughs> I'm Just the fact that I, every time we talk, I point out how little time you have left. You better make the most of it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Doesn't mean that I want you to cry. I'm just jealous. And I act out weird ways. Mm -hmm. Emily, mm -hmm. has Paris lived up to your expectations? Has it just been a month of of, of frolicking and and cycling and, and three dollar you know, bottles of wine? Which yeah, and she's been sending me pictures of how cheap wine is. It's insane. <laughs> oh, and it's still it's good. So good. It's like it's so cheap, cheap, crappy wine. Yeah, yeah. No. She literally no, sent a picture, line. Emily, I, I checked, you sent a picture one time of certain, you know, local uh, wine bottles and they were like three euros. And I saw, I, 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 I went down the French wine section specifically to, and pulled up your picture to see if I could find the same. $18 was the cheapest up to $43 for the bottles that you sent me a picture that were $3 in Paris. Sheesh. It's I crazy. think the most bottle we spent or bo bottle I've spent was uh, like seven bucks. If that, like most of them <laughs> are like three or four dollars. Oh, and it's probably so. high quality wine. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, incredible. it's the best wine I've ever had. You can't oh, even get a bottle goodness. of Yellowtail for seven dollars. I would never even drink <laughs> yeah. Yellowtail after having like yeah. this no, French well, wine. I'm going to be so bougie when I go back. I feel like Listen, I'm going to have to buy the like eighteen dollar French wine because my palate is just, you know, so refined. Yeah, but, but you're going to be mad paying 18 bucks knowing that you paid three, you know, literally for the yeah. same label. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah. $3 in America won't even buy you those weird, like, juice box wines that they sell, like, in the big bin <laughs> yeah. at the front of Rite Aid. Like, even those, 
Even those which are quote them, I think wine is in quotes on the box uh, <laughs> for legal reasons. Even that you can't get for three bucks. It seems it's Paris seems like wine, a magical actually. place. Dude, yeah. I had lunch at Taco yeah. Bell yesterday, and the Diet Pepsi was more than three bucks. I mean, it's like the yeah, not even get a two liter. It's crazy. Yeah. Good so now you inflation. get why I'm sad every time you bring up me leaving because I have to go back. That's what I have to look forward to is eighteen dollar bottles of wine. Eighteen dollar bottles of wine and seven dollar gallon of gas. So, yeah, welcome yeah. home. Yeah, America fell apart while you left. I'm kind of hoping my passport just like disappears and I have to stay here longer. <laughs> can we can we get Pete Budahedge? Can we get our Secretary of Transportation to just figure out how we convert our engines to run on French wine? It's much more economical <laughs> for everyone at this point. And if you accidentally spill a little bit on you, nobody's upset. You just lick it off your fingers. Hey, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make I mean, it happen, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will say this. You don't want to get pulled over if you were have just spilled some wine all over. Right. It's probably not a great look if French Chardonnay is, is dripping off of you and you get pulled over. But at least your car is running, you know, very efficiently. Yeah. If, you know, but $3. I also feel like if I were to tell the cops, like, my car is running on wine, they would be like, oh, so you're really drunk right now. Like, <laughs> just straight to jail. <laughs> <laughs> do do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars yes. you're going to jail all right you're so emily what is the buzz this week what's going on um well there's lots going on uh of course we're going to start with ukraine because that is um probably going to be going on for a very long time so um you know we talked last week about how things will constantly be changing and you know it's, it might be hard to stay up on the news but you just got to be diligent about it but one mm -hmm. thing that will definitely be the same throughout this entire time is that Ukrainians are going to need help and support. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been really, um, I think, encouraging seeing all the different organizations and individuals who are like pledging to donate money and um, trying to help Ukrainians. But uh, one company in particular that's been doing a lot is Airbnb. Uh, they have offered free housing to 100,000 refugees um, wow. who are fleeing the conflict, um, which is just incredible. They've done this before. I think they did it, I know, for um, Afghanistan refugees as well. Um, so they're really solid on that. But um, what is really interesting this time are um, people have realized that they can book Airbnbs in Ukraine um, because no one's actually trying to go there right now. But uh, if you book uh, an Airbnb in Ukraine, that money will go directly to the renter. So this way, they're kind of financially able mm, to help owner. Ukrainians in a really That's direct good. way. And and Airbnb yeah. has actually waived all of the extra fees that normally go with a booking an Airbnb. So that way, all of your money is just going straight to the renter. Um, and it's just really great because a lot of people that are leaving, you know, they're not working right now because they don't have a job anymore. They don't even they may not even have right. an office building. And so um, this is a really great way to help just directly fund people that are Trying to pick up the pieces from what's been so what's so going so on in, in theory, uh, if a family had to leave or they've they they uh, what is it vacated? What's the word? Sorry, uh, evacuated, uh, evacuated. Uh, fled, Thank fled. You. Yeah, yeah. So if a family evacuated and left their home behind or their apartment or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're in Poland now or they're staying with family elsewhere out of harm's way, they can put their empty former home on Airbnb. Somebody here in America can rent the Airbnb and the money will go to that family. Obviously, we won't go stay there. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. It is what awesome. Cool My friend Noelle actually did that. She posted on her stories the other day and she posted the the uh, interaction between her and the owner of the home. And just he was so extremely grateful mm -hmm. and explained to her that him and his that his wife and kids had left. And it just was like, oh, you hear about that and you think that's great. And then you see like, oh, my friend did that. And she was actually talking to this Ukrainian man yeah. who was so extremely grateful for that basically donation. I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a blessing for sure. All right. Uh, what else is going on? Um, in some exciting movie news, uh, the movie I Am Legend is officially getting a sequel. Um, and Michael B. Jordan is going to star in it. And surprisingly. That's the Will Smith one? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Yeah, so Will Smith mm -hmm. is also supposed to star in the movie, but, you know, it's been like 15 years, so you may not remember it, but Will Smith brutally died at the very end of the last one. Um, sorry to spoil oh, that. I was just going to see it this, this weekend, movie. Emily. I was finally getting around <laughs> to it. Surprise, I've never seen finally it. Finally getting around to it. <laughs> well, you've had 15 years, so sorry. 
That's true. Um, but he, he was dead he, all along. Like, yeah. He died. Like it is not like a questionable death. It was he died. That is very true. Yeah. The only way he comes back now is through Jesus. So I don't know what that means that he's attached to this movie because it's not well, a Michael prequel. Michael B. Jordan is playing Jesus. You do you not putting the pieces together? <laughs> Maybe it is a ghost. Maybe I would he's a love ghost. if Michael B. Jordan played oh, yeah. Jesus. I would a be a big version. fan of that. Of Will Smith. <laughs> he haunts Michael B. Jordan. He mentors him, teaches him, kind of like Mr. Miyagi style. It actually has style. nothing to do, yeah. But maybe it has nothing to do with the plot of the original. It's like the world's just recovered since whatever caused the you know zombie outbreak, and Michael mm-hmm. B. Jordan just living life, and the ghost of Will Smith comes back, and they're just marketing it as uh, you know uh, I am Legend Two. Either way, I'm seeing it. I like I, I like Michael B. Jordan. Should he be his son from 15 years ago, and now he's grown up? Yeah, are they going to do it like that. the? Remember that Will Smith movie where he played him and like his like him younger you know they did like cg on his yeah. face i saw in the theater no like i he, didn't watch that I it was terrible it was terrible it was absolutely way. terrible but they but will smith played like young will smith and maybe they're doing that maybe it's a prequel to i am legend or something right i, I do have a question though and not not to be you know i don't it seems like there's a lot of films and tv shows that are about like post-apocalyptic worlds right now right. about sort mm-hmm. of end of the world do you kind of feel like, hey, read the room a little here, Hollywood? Like, we don't want to talk about, like, pandemics or outbreaks or, or you know, end times calamities. Can we can we change the conversation a little? I Maybe maybe it's just my perception that I feel like every other show is some sort of, you know, just dystopian nightmare, squid game or, you know, zombie outbreak or but it's like. I'm ready for a new thing to take hold. Like a few years ago, it was it was vampires. They seemed so wholesome when it, there was just a lot of it was just a lot of vampire content. It now was like, it seems but like, it was like sexy vampires where they had like crushes on non vampires, and it was like. But a how do we go? How, how do we go to from sexy vampires everywhere? Uh, <laughs> permeating culture with sexy vampires right. to just everything is some post-apocalyptic calamity. I'm I'm fine going back to sexy vampires. I'm fine with sexy werewolves, frankly. <laughs> I I am I'm down fine for like a lot more of sexy like horror creatures. Dumb like Will Smith comedies, like Semi Pro and Step Brothers. Where are those? Like let's get more Will stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Will Smith. Yeah. Give me give me another hit. Give me a Will F- Will Ferrell and Will Smith comedy. Wait, did I say Will I Smith? Watch that. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, it, no, it was yeah. A, I was thinking about. Did you see like her, a few days ago uh, th- that there's a Warriors game uh, and during warmups, Will Ferrell dressed as Jackie, whatever the character's name is from yeah. Semi Pro, oh, the that's dope. <laughs> came out and and did the warmups with the team. He was playing D on Clay Thompson. He was shooting half court shots with Steph, and like he was talking to the refs and all this stuff, like full on, you know, NBA 1970s outfit. It was hilarious. Get more of that. We don't need a post-apocalyptic stuff. Jamie, I feel like you see a lot of movies. You, you know, you one of your <laughs> children you works at the uh, works at the uh, uh, movie theater. He at one fired. point, you were getting to see a lot. Well, that's okay. She still was getting. <laughs> he lost problem. that job. Yeah. What, whoa, see, are we whoa. allowed to talk? Is it because My he was bro, sneaking his mom in the movies? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna kill me right Wait now. He's second. gonna kill me. Do it. Say it. Let's okay. hear it. Let's hear okay, it. Okay, he's going to be so mad at me. He w- he wasn't doing anything illegal, and we give him such a hard time at home. But they just stopped scheduling him, and so he claims they just stopped scheduling him. And we're like, dude, you got fired. Like, I don't I don't know how to say it to you, but you got fired. Yeah. Uh, but he still just thinks that like right. they just haven't called him in in a couple of months, which is fine. But he has a new job. He's happy. Jobs, jobs don't ghost you like girls. Oh, you got broken up with. Sorry. <laughs> like, he's happy now. He didn't really like it. I was going to say, at least it's a passive aggressive way of getting fired that's non traumatic. Yeah. Like, how does a manager not call you in and like tell you we no longer need your services? Like, you don't do that. That's unprofessional. That's what I'm saying. That's why everyone at the house is like, I don't know if you got the story right, dude, because I think you might have gotten fired. But, Jesse, this is what I was going to say about the movies. Maybe (laughs) these movies have always been there all along. But you know how when you get like a, a new car and you got this new i don't know black jeep and all of a sudden all you see on the road are black jeeps so maybe we're in the middle of just the craziest season of our lives ever with wars and plagues and so every time we look up we're like it's another movie about like some kind of something taking over the world maybe that's what's happening i don't know 
Yeah, I, I, I it definitely. What you're saying, so I, you, our perception, because we're thinking about this topic, we see it everywhere. Because I know what you're saying about the Jeep be. thing. I don't think that there's actually more Jeeps. It's just like yeah, I'm in the market for a Jeep, so I'm thinking about Jeeps, and I see them all the time now. So that's right. what you're saying that it's our perception, and that could be true. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that that seems like a, a fair point. You know, it's like um, or the Illuminati is programming <laughs> our brains. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. All of this stuff Woo! to get us ready for the coming apocalypse. I don't oh. know. I think I'm right. Desensitization. So then that's what it yeah. is. Oh, okay. So, but Derek, here's my, here's the only way I can poke holes in that is like we've, we've established earlier, you know, at one point we were just, there was just sexy vampires everywhere. Was the Illuminati planning on some sort of sexy vampire takeover in real life? And those plans just didn't work out. Like, what are we thinking there? I'm what was, what was I would say that? it did work out. The twilight craze is like still going strong. Like, it is. So I think it, it, it has a new generation. My daughter's fourteen, and she's into it oh, now. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back. It had a Wait little. Wait a minute. Oh. Like your fourteen-year-old no. read about sexy vampires. That's 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 very I mean, mature. You know, pure. she didn't read it. She just watched it. Is yeah. that better? Yeah, I no. mean, they, they Look are at that sexy, sexy vampires. That's hey, just they, they were... watch Batman. He did a better job. We that. watched it together. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Oh, you watched the sexy vampire show or Batman? No, we haven't. I haven't seen Batman. Wait, I think she has seen Batman. Is it bad? Oh, no, it's great. It's phenomenal. Okay, good. It's amazing. You liked it? Yeah, it was great. I thought it was amazing. Would it have helped you do better on the Batman quiz last last week? No. Okay. Not Maybe at all. let's not bring that up. <laughs> N- nothing. <laughs> listen, you guys are cold blooded for that. You hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I would like to clarify that was all Tyler. Oh, you know yeah. what? I, I, I knew I, as, I was soon as, as soon as the, he, the question went one direction and then did a, a triple backflip into the other direction, I was like, oh, this is Tyler Huckabee's work. By you no, know what? By I'm no calling it. it. We're going to do part two of that game at the end of this episode. No, we're not doing we no road trip not. stuff. We got a lot more <laughs> and we have Emily questions. So, yep. Stay tuned at the end of the show. We get, we're going to do part two of the Batman quiz just for Derek. Jamie, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to circle back on something, but your story about your son, his passive aggressive <laughs> firing, if we we're calling it that, a passive aggressive termination. Um, uh, I I actually was in a similar scenario. I haven't thought about this in a long time. When I was, it was freshman year of college. Over the, I came home during the summer, and and I I had decided that I was in a declare my major as journalism and one of my friend's fathers was the news director at a at a, a local media institution here i won't i won't uh get into the name of it but either, anyway got me an internship okay i go mm. my first day i'm like all right i'm get to work in a real newsroom he's kind of showing me around the next day my friend's dad gets fired okay oh, but no. i have just been brought on as the new intern directly under him Stop. I come playing. the next day. Most people don't know who I'm there or who I am or why I'm there because my friend's dad didn't really tell a lot of people about this new intern that's coming on. <gasps> so I was showing up for weeks just wandering around. And I don't even, <laughs> the only reason I was doing it, the only reason I could wander around the newsroom is because I had a badge to get in. They knew they didn't know who I was, but they knew apparently I was supposed to be there because I had a badge that was getting me in. But I didn't know anyone. I was really introduced to anyone so there was like a two-week period where i was just wandering around this newsroom just kind of talking to people and sconching myself in office culture until i just literally decided not to go anymore no one ever called me one time no. like i didn't have a schedule i was just coming and going <laughs> so had he worked anything out you know, with the county? i don't, I don't know paid? if i ever got any credit for it this is this oh, is it great yeah. huh no <laughs> It was an internship. And I, oh, right. like I said, I remember one day I just decided I would just mill around the file cabinets for a while. And I spent the whole afternoon just doing that. And then just, Gosh. like I said, I was just kind of coming and going till I decided there was no point in showing up. Did anymore. you tell them what you were doing? Like, hey, I know that you're not there, but I've been going anyway. Or did no, you take No, it was you really take the very credit? awkward. No, no, it was very awkward because he is, he was he was quite established professionally, and that really devastated uh, him. So the last thing on his mind is my daughter's friend who just started his <laughs> internship yesterday. I think he was more worried about his livelihood at that point. Um, and, but I like can't I said, believe I just, that. So there was nobody. He was going to be your manager, and and yes. so you showed. But like nobody he, thought he ran like, the whole show. 
So yeah. were you like scheduled oh. to work? Or like, this how did you know when to come got in? The we, didn't, we, we, didn't get, we didn't get to the schedule. I just figured I'd keep coming, and <laughs> that would work itself out, which I so, did do. So that's like a tactic that people do. You just sidle up. You know, you just sidle up mm-hmm. to a person you want to become friends with or get favor with or meet or whatever. You just sidle I mean, up. I, You're I just there. Ha- there were a couple of reporters. There were a couple of reporters I got I got chummy with, but they didn't know what my, the reason I was there. You know, it wasn't like I was assisting them on their assignments. I was just oh going, hey, what you working on over here? So, yeah. J- so, Jamie, maybe you need to tell your son, just sidle up. Just start showing up. He's not on the schedule. Yep. Just wear the shirt and, you know, be proactive. I would like to say in his defense. He'll find a way. I would like to say in his defense, he didn't really enjoy the job and he has a new job working at a grocery store and he's very happy. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Hey, we'll forget them then. I don't know why Get them. <laughs> they, met, they, they lost out on a good employee. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. forget them. Hey, I'm with, look, you can come work for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you live in Nashville, you can come work in the studio for me. I know you a good stock. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Emily, what, what else you got? Anything else for the buzz? Uh, yeah, I got one more thing. Um, ending it on some good church news, which we always love. Um, so... Around the U.S., there's like thousands of acres that churches own that are just completely empty. They haven't done anything with them. And so um, a nonprofit called Enterprise Community Partners recently announced $8.5 million in grants. And they're going to work with congregations in Atlanta, New York, Baltimore, Miami and Seattle to build affordable housing projects on their property. So um, this will build roughly 6,000 affordable homes across the U.S., wow. um, which is just really oh, awesome. Great. Like there are, that's awesome. I mean, truthfully, there are like millions of Americans that need better affordable housing because the average cost of a house is just so much money. Um, and so this is a really awesome initiative that these churches are doing. Um, and I wanted to share this because I think it's something that, a lot more churches should be doing. And, um, you know, obviously everyone has different means, but um, it's just really encouraging when churches kind of like seek out ways to um, get creative with what they, what they've been given. And so um, I want to congratulate these churches for using this empty space and doing it to like help the community. I, I like the idea, not just using empty land that they could provide, but like, I like the idea of churches rethinking even how to re reuse their facilities for community impact Mm -hmm. the other six days a week, you know, like there's churches that do more community center stuff. They feed the homeless. They do things where they're utilizing the assets that they have. And it's not just about the Sunday gathering. So, I mean, that's, that's awesome. And I think absolutely more churches should be thinking like this. It's great. I love that. That's something that our church has done. We have, we have a big building. Yeah. We have a big building. And then, you know, during the week it houses office for a ton of nonprofits in town. And so it's not sitting empty those other six oh, days, cool. which is just really, really great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many possibilities for the, because we've all been in churches where it's like, dude, the atrium in this church could feed <laughs> half the city right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like the cost, of the, the cost of the water feature, operating the water feature <laughs> and maintaining it, you know, in the lobby is, is probably enough to, to help a local family. But like, even like the idea of making the church like a WeWork for nonprofits on days that aren't Sunday is cool. Yeah. Or, hey, you know, I remember when I was growing up, we would, and I was really into like basketball. It was like a lot of times churches were the ones that had the gyms in town where they right. would open it up to like community, mm-hmm. the, you know, the city if they needed like an extra place for kids to play basketball or, you know, I think. Can we, I feel like we're kind of the pandemic and this is anecdotal. I haven't looked at any research. I'm sure our friends at Barna or any of those other researchers. The good Barna. The, yeah. the good Barna. Good Barna. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good Barna uh, could, could, you know, probably, a, you know, give, give some validity to this theory. But it seems like coming out of the pandemic, I don't know if there will be sort of the extravagance when it comes to the facilities of a lot of kind of mega churches and large you know, evangelical institutions, but for the ones that are still around that are the size that a lot of times are in a lot of cities, other than like a big box store, 
are some of the largest standalone, you know, structures in the whole city. Yeah. Like, why not use those for more community good? Even if they can't, you know, they don't have like residential dorms or something. Right. Like, could we could we convert them into places where members of the community could utilize the facilities as, as just sort of a, a good faith way of of helping people that 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 might need assistance? You know. All right. Well, there's a lot more where that came from. Follow relevant on all the socials to stay in touch with all the stuff we're doing and make sure that relevantmagazine.com is part of your weekly or daily web browsing. Thanks, Emily. Um, au revoir. Enjoy your last two days in Paris. Don't smuggle back 50 pounds of French wine in your carry-on. We learned that lesson no, earlier do, in the show. No, do smuggle back <laughs> 50 pounds. I'm good. fully prepared to just pay extra at the airport to like get everything through. <laughs> I want to have French wine with Emily. There you go. All we'll right. Stay happen. tuned. Up next... Sean Levy joins us. listening to Luna Lee. The song is What You're Thinking. Today's show is also brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. Over the years, therapy has played a major role in my life, uh, helping <laughs> navigate through uh, you know rocky life seasons with a counselor I trust. Well, BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. Right now, Relevant Podcast listeners can get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Relevant. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Relevant. Well, our guest today is Sean Levy. He's a director, producer, and actor who's been a part of a few of our favorite films and shows like Arrival, Free Guy, which I just watched with my kid again the other day, Stranger Things, and so much more. His new film is called The Adam Project. It comes out today and stars Ryan Reynolds and an A-list group of actors. Uh, ahead of its release, we sat down with Sean to discuss his interest in making earnest movies and how his friendship with Ryan Reynolds helped shape the type of stories he wanted to tell. Here's our conversation with director, producer, John Levy. What's your plan? Well, I'm not going to explain my plan to a 12-year-old nerd with an You don't have, I do not have plan. a plan, but I know somebody who does. Dad. I'm the godfather of time travel? The Adam Project. We don't pull this off. Well, congratulations on the movie. I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I'm kind of a sucker for father-son stories, so this, this one was right up my alley. And I was curious from from the when you in the very beginning when you first started working on this and thinking about this, how close was it to what ended up being on the screen to the final cut? Did it evolve over time, or is it pretty much what you expected? Well, it always evolves. Certainly, also when I work with Ryan, our process is we'll, we come aboard to something because there's a big, juicy idea. And then the first thing we do is we dig into the script and we do rewrites with the writer. We then do rewrites with the two of us. And we really try and hone that thing for months before we shoot so that it's our vision of that idea. With mm -hmm. Adam Project, this idea of, of a literal revisitation of one's history, a, a sci-fi movie that's less about saving the world and more about saving yourself, that felt incredibly compelling. And the movie that you've now watched is incredibly close to what we set out to make. Time travel exists. This world, our world, everything has already been changed. Where we're going to put the genie back in the bottle. Adam? Dad. What is it you think about, uh, obviously you, you know Ryan very well, but what does he bring to a role like this that is maybe unique to him, to his personality, that he could do that nobody else could do? 
Well, I think that Ryan is deft and nimble with tone in a way that a lot of actors aren't. For one thing, he is a comedic genius and there aren't many of those. And it is innate to him. And I can tell you from experience, you can't direct that. You cannot direct a dramatic actor to be funny. You can direct a comedic actor to be dramatic. Hmm. But Hmm. you can't teach them to hear the music if they don't hear it. And comedy is rhythm and music. Laura, this is me. Hi. Parallel contact, babe? Well, you know, you've always said that you wished you'd met me earlier. Here I am. (laughs) The great joy for me of making Adam Project, I wasn't surprised that he was funny, but he really opened himself up to the dramatic aspect of this movie. And there are scenes in this movie, notably one in a bar with Jen Garner and then one at the end with Mark Ruffalo, where it's not the Ryan Reynolds we expect. Mm -hmm. It's not the Ryan Reynolds we see in other movies. It's authentic and raw in a way that Ryan doesn't always allow of himself on screen. And I think that is partly a function of the trust that's developed between the two of us. He came to this movie very open to be who he is and show who he is. Do you remember this? I mean, if this is happening to me, it already happened to you, right? Unless it works more like a multiverse where each rebel creates an awful time. A multiverse. My God, we watch too many movies. Why, why this movie right now? This is, a, this, is a very, this is a meaningful movie, and I'm curious what you think it has to say to a very strange and kind of uncertain time that we live in. I just think that any storytelling that can reconnect people with their humanity and their emotional better selves is good. It's good for the way we live and cumulatively just might be good for the world that we live in. And so making a movie that is committed to being anti-cynical, positive, anti-nihilist, hopeful. These are values I believe in, and it is the kinds of stories I want to put into the world. I spent 30 years trying to get away from the me that was you. And I'll tell you what, You were the best part all along. That was Sean Levy. Make sure to check out his new film, The Adam Project. It releases today on Netflix. Stay tuned. Up next, it's our spring break road game something. I don't know. Stay tuned. No, I've been telling them keep up. That way the time and they ease up. This ain't my home at my lease up. He's making me Mona Lisa. Okay, don't really get with them poles say. I would still do this for no pay. It would be kind of hard though, I'm not gonna lie. Been on my go, family grown, good to my soul. New air rolls, fit in my bow. Ain't it? Who knows where they might go? Hey, hey, brother, they understand that I'm just a son of the son of man. I'm running mad, but don't want to dance. Just trying to keep it a hundred grand. So don't let me. You're listening to Triple E. The song is Right Out the Gate. Hey, they're going on a tour, the Unashamed Tour coming up, coming in through our town. You should go check it out. Good stuff. All right, well, okay, the best laid plans. So earlier, you heard me make the executive decision that we weren't going to do the road trip table topics game. We were going to go back to the Batman quiz. I pulled it up. There's not enough questions <laughs> to do a whole game. There's not there enough questions left. No, there's... Yeah, thank exactly. you. You're thank off the you, hook. Really, <laughs> You're off the hook, man. <laughs> but I will give here just a sample. This is the last Derek question that Tyler wrote last week. <laughs> of the Batman quiz for the entirety of his 80 year run. Batman's adventures have been published by DC comics before being officially retitled DC comics in 1977, the comic book company that published the stories of Batman along with Superman, Wonder Woman and the flash was known as action comics, whiz bang comics, allied comics or detective comics. Derek, what would your answer have been? What was DC before it was DC? I know this. I know this. Action, whiz bang, allied, or detective? It's either action or detective. I can't remember, though. It's allied comics. See? Okay. No. Well, I, I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's it's spring break time. You guys are trapped in a car with your friends. You're, you've got hours to kill. You've been listening to, you know, the archives of the relevant podcast for hours. You're ready for human interaction. So what we're going to do is I am basically going to give you ideas, listener, of questions that you could ask your car mates 
to pass the time, to engage, to get to know them better. And so we're going to get to know the cast. This is our road trip conversation game. And I just, I'm just going to lob these out there. We'll go around the horn. Here we go. Um, let's see. And these are just random table topics cards that I just picked up. Here you go. Jesse, what's your favorite thing to do on the computer? <laughs> My favorite thing to do on the computer okay, keep is, it PG. Keep it PG. is to is to close it at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> just get my laptop and go like this and close it. Uh, I don't know. I like looking at, I like looking at, uh, uh, you know, I like going down rabbit holes on just weird <laughs> topics on my computer. I feel like that one should be pretty evident. If I can't fall asleep and my laptop is nearby, that's what I'm doing. Looking up uh, weird, you know, rabbit holes. I like it. All right, Derek, what do you hoard? <laughs> what do I hoard? What do you hoard? Everybody collects something. Um, you got a big old coin equipment. jar. Oh, music, say, equipment. music equipment. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm a sucker for for music equipment. For Are sure. you like always like buying rare stuff or always kind of looking for that stuff? Not well. You know what? For me, a lot of times is 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 software stuff too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like it's it's between finding a, a a hardware piece that I I've been looking at or like a synth that you know that's odd and somebody made in their back i just download i I like to download like indie products like stuff that yeah that people you know that's not popular so that's kind of my thing do you play instruments or are you more of a producer um i play the keys enough to get in trouble okay yeah i'm not i'm not really good at any instrument though it takes to be good at it it takes a lot of time so i just pay really really good people and tell them what i want them to play Nice. I, I do think that is cool. Is like hoarding cool music equipment and instruments and like old software and stuff. It, I don't know if you guys watched that T Pain documentary on the series This Is Pop on Netflix, but I mean, he kind of discovered Auto Tune by just kind of goofing around with different kind of pieces of old, you know, uh, software, uh, yeah, and plugins and stuff. Yeah. yeah, this is one of those. This is one of the actually, uh, you know, T Pain was doing a show. Um, and they had this instrument, it's called instrument one. And this was, uh, one of those instruments that I got, uh, and it describe what that looks like. That's crazy looking. So it looks like a, it looks like a small guitar. Shout out to Artiphone. You know what I'm saying? But it looks like a small guitar, but you can play it as a bass. You can play it as a guitar. You can play it as a violin. You can play it as a piano. You can play it as a, as a drum machine. So it's, it's, this is like one of the most killer instruments. So I, I get stuff like this. And I'm like, I'll try it out and see how it is. So usually the more indie, the better. You know, I, that's I don't, awesome. You know, yeah, for sure. Jamie, do you hoard anything? I hoard magazines. Like I always think that if I'm I'm gonna read it one day. And so it drives my husband absolutely crazy. Like he even I, still like, <laughs> can't yeah. Like I where mean, do you, you buy magazines make- other than the three at the checkout at the grocery store? So I used to get People Magazine in the mail because, you know, when Mm. I started getting People Magazine, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be on Relevant all the time, I got to know what's happening in the world. And I've read maybe (laughs) three in the last 18 months because who has time to read a magazine anymore? Okay. But I I might have them all. Let me tell you, you do not need to read People Magazine to be connected to what we cover. We don't talk about Kate Gosling or the Octomom or anything like that. Well, so I haven't you're read good. any of them, so there you go. There yeah. You go. Oh, How, good. Where wow. do you think I get all of our stars? They're just like us material, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just th- I don't just think of it. I don't just know. I just don't know who wore it better to Starbucks that day. <laughs> here's here's uh here's the one for everybody. What's the longest your hair has been <laughs> oh gosh I, mean, I, I rocked in the early 2000s a full scott stapp a full creed like back <laughs> that was probably the longest that my hair has been but i had braids oh I had braids in high school you had in braids in high school oh yeah, we, we gotta get college. a picture of that we want to see a picture i gotta of find them my home they they were the dustiest braids you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. They were like they were like Meek Mill freestyling in the middle of Philly with no record deal in the middle of the projects braids. They were bad. For nice. sure. I can't wait. Maybe you this. should ask me, Cameron, how short my hair has ever been. Okay, please tell. A little bit longer than Jesse's. Did you right do a now. Rachel Maddow? I did a little bit longer than Jesse's. <gasps> you oh, had a wow. Rachel Maddow? What year was this? Listen, it wasn't as short. Like, it was a little bit long. I, I'll send y'all a picture. It's it's the worst thing I've ever... Maybe it's top 10 worst things decisions I've ever made in my entire life. And I've made some bad ones. Yeah. 
Okay, I, that's going to be the next question. What's the top 10 worst decisions you've ever made in your life? <laughs> Number one. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Well, here we go. Uh, yep. this is, uh, this is the, I hope the statute of limitations has expired on this. Cause, uh, Jesse, you had long bad. like emo hair, right? I like, did. You know, someone, uh, 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 I guess it's been a couple years now, but someone tagged me in a photo that it was, this is an ad, I'll put it in the chat here, but someone tagged me in a photo of an ad that long ago, or no, I think it was in a magazine spread at Relevant from maybe 2005 or six, and I was looking back at some very regrettable hair that I had <laughs> at the time and, and vowed to keep it short ever since seeing this okay. photo again. I, so. I mentioned this to Derek the other night, but like 2005, six, in my mind, and I know what this does aging me, but in my mind, that wasn't that long ago. Okay. Relevant. Yeah. I started the company in 2000. Okay. So by the time you're getting up to five and six, we're five or six years into the company. Right. I mean, we're publishing books, magazines. Web, I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff. I remember that era like it was yesterday. And then the other night I was watching a Cat Williams special from 2006 and, I, and to tell you how wow. dated the look, the clothes, the hair, it was like I was watching something from the 70s. It was insane how ancient that looked. And I couldn't believe it, it was 2006. But that's the yeah. same about your hair in 2005. It's like you don't realize like how long ago that was, how dated that was, you know, but. Yeah, it's, it was not a great. I, I found the. I dropped the link in the in the chat there, but I was like, "Oh gosh, please burn!" If anyone's hoarding that magazine, I ask that they please dispose of it because we don't need we don't any need physical evidence. evidence of of that of that hair decision. All yeah. right, what was the last big risk you took? We'll go around the horn, but we'll la we'll go with Jamie last because she likes to think about her answers. So, Jesse, what was the last big risk you took? Oh, this is this is an easy one. So um, I told Cameron this, and and uh, y y you know, and I think we were talking about this off camera. But there's been a, a stomach bug going around my home, and uh, you know, last week I don't know if last week during the show you guys could tell I was feeling a little under the weather, hadn't really eaten much for about a week straight. Yesterday I ate a full twelve inch sub, okay, from Subway, all oh, wow. twelve inches, not one oh, bite. Wow. After not eating for basically a week. I haven't eaten a full foot long in one sitting since high school, I think. It's probably been 20 years since I've <laughs> looked at a foot long, a foot of sandwich and be like, I'm going to sit here and eat the whole thing. I knew the risk and I felt <laughs> awful after. I felt like blood sugar was shooting all around. But can I tell you this? The mm. risk was worth it because it was a delicious sup. And I ate all 12 inches. Pretty big risk. That's in, the last in big the one. 30 whatever years of your life. The biggest risk you ever took was yesterday when you. I thought ate you said. I thought you said what? What <laughs> you said? The biggest risk ever, or the most recent? Because that oh, was a right. huge I risk. I did. I did. You're right. What was the last big that was risk yesterday you took? Yesterday afternoon right. at okay. like one o'clock, <laughs> right. I, I made the conscious decision to right. while at the tail end of a stomach bug, <laughs> and I put. I told him. I said. I told him in there. Run it through the garden, man. I want everything on that sub. Okay, everything. I, I don't even ask me. If I want something, the answer is yes. Just yes. put everything that Wait, you're allowed the to put on there. Even the yellow peppers. Oh, yeah. And, oh Ooh, man. Yeah. That oh, yeah. was a big I, risk. I, I, I said, if you, like, unless you don't think you're allowed to without charging me extra, just put it on there. I don't care. Run it through the garden. I'll meet you at the register. Case oh, closed. Gosh. And Unreal. I got to say, guys, it was it was a phenomenal sub, though I felt awful after. Derek, but what was the last it. big risk you took? I played uh, probably... 10 games of basketball with Aaron Cole yesterday and really? my legs feel like they're going to fall off of my body. <laughs> was it full so, court or half court? It was half court, but we were playing like we we're playing two on two. Oh yeah. It was so just like moving. back yeah. to back to back to back yeah. to back to back to back to back. And um, yeah. Out of the 10 games, how many did you win your team? Oh, I played, I played awful. It was a terrible situation. Well, no, this is what it was. Aaron Cole had a, brought a ringer in, and this dude literally did not miss. Like, that's really why we lost. Like, Aaron had, like, his team, it was him. And Aaron's a pretty good baller, too. He has a pretty good shot. But he brought this dude in. It was this white guy. And the guy was shooting with his eyes closed yeah. and, and throwing him in. So you got to be worried about that white guy in the wide league. I mean, like, yeah, bro. Yeah, the old white guy, too. 
Like if, that guy. if he's there, he's there for a reason. Right. <laughs> if everybody's <laughs> in their twenties and early thirties, and then there's a one dude who's like sixty, just don't don't even don't even play. <laughs> and this is why I love. I was gonna say this is what I love about those kind of the white guys that play. They won't say one word to you the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like I was just talking smack. Annihilate you. Yeah, I was talking smack. This dude was shooting hand in hand in his face, like he's falling f- away sideways. He's shooting from half court. Steph Curry range did not say one word. You not even a like yeah, smack. good job, buddy. Yeah, but I listen, I have to talk smack. That's literally my love language. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> yeah. But Jamie, last big uh, risk last, you took. Last big risk that I took was probably um stepping foot on a cruise cruise boat in the middle of a, a global pandemic. So there's that. <laughs> that is <laughs> that's that's pretty good. That's a risk. That's, that's a really significant risk. That's a risk. Yeah. Did you no, how did it turn out for you? It turned out great. Did, I, did I, I, I weighed all of the all the, the costs that it could cost me. I stepped on. I had a great time, and I came off the, exactly the same. No COVID, nothing. So it was great. Good. Well, exactly the same plus ten pounds of buffet. Wait, wait. I mean, I don't know that, exactly but I'm just saying. The same Every time plus I go on a cruise, ten pounds of a pizza yeah. at two in the afternoon, and then again at midnight. Yes, I'm telling you, the unlimited, yeah, the the twenty four hour pizza bar and the unlimited ice cream bar. Mm. It's a problem. It's a problem. Those cruises. All right. Well, there's a lot more questions, but we've run out of time. We will come back to this. I got some good ones uh, sitting right here. So, all right. That'll do it for our spring break road trip. Get to know you quiz. So when you turn off music and turn off the podcast and you actually have to talk to people for a while, there you go. Well, before we wrap it up, I want to thank Sean Levy for joining us today. Make sure to check out his new film, The Adam Project, which is out today on Netflix. Great flick. Also, okay, I said earlier we have huge news on the Tuesday show. And when I say huge, it's huge. Okay, game-changing for Relevant, game-changing for the podcast, game-changing for the magazine. Big news on Tuesday. Okay, but before that, this week on Wednesday, just a couple days ago, we launched a new YouTube series. You should go check it out. It's called Three Minutes With. And it's three-minute videos talking to the biggest names at the intersection of faith and culture. We have actors, musicians, thought leaders, innovators, comedians. Uh, we're releasing a new episode every Wednesday. It's free on the Relevant YouTube channel. Just go over to the, yeah, just go over to YouTube, search for Relevant, search for three minutes with, and you'll see there's a bunch of episodes already there. And every Wednesday, there'll be a new one. So go check it out. I think you'll like it. It's, uh, it's good content and quick. Isn't that the name of the game? Uh, okay, but but for real, don't miss the Tuesday show. That's all I'm going to say. If you happen to be online on Monday, you know, you could check out our site and see it there too. But if you're podcast first, uh, the Tuesday show has got some big news. Don't miss it. Uh, hey, in the meantime, go over to relevantstore.com. You can see our latest merch, podcast fan gear. You can get our annual print edition. Um, you can also sign up for our daily newsletter at relevantmagazine.com to keep you in touch with our best content. It's our top five trending articles every morning. And make sure to follow Relevant on all the socials so you don't miss a thing. Uh, we're on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, and occasionally on TikTok. And now, make sure to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe over there and don't miss an episode of 3 Minutes With. Okay, on that note, we'll wrap things up. I'm Cameron Strang. I'm Jesse Carey. I'm Derek Miner. I'm Jamie Ivey. We will see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Be safe. for listening to the relevant podcast check out our features interviews and news updates every day at relevantmagazine.com and make sure to follow relevant on facebook twitter and instagram for the latest for more great podcasts browse the shows on the relevant podcast network which you can find at our site and while you're there don't miss the all new era of relevant magazine a new issue releases every other month at relevantmagazine.com I'm fine going back to sexy vampires. I'm fine with sexy werewolves, frankly. Relevant Podcast Network.